Okay, what we have here is a strain rosette. It's 45-45 strain rosette. So we've got three strain gauges measuring the strain in those three different directions, and they're given uh, right there. Okay, uh, and I want to find basically, hey, what are the principal strains, and uh, and the yeah maximum in plane shear strain. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to orient this in this direction. I've got my x and I've got my y direction uh, like that, okay? And again, I have equations to figure these out for 45, 45, 45 uh, angles here, okay? So the first thing I need to do is find the state of stress, okay? So my initial state of stress, then from that I'm going to do transformations to figure out what the maximum actually is. So when I set it up this way, epsilon x then is 300, times 10 to the minus 6. Strain in the y, again, directly measured is 450, times 10 to the minus 6. And then from that, from the equation, it's in your book for a 45 degree strain rosette, I can just very simply find 2 times, oops, negative 250 minus 300. And again, I'm dropping the 10 to the negative 6 just in the calculation and I'll add it back when I get to the answer. Okay, and again this equation just plug and chug from the book not too difficult. Okay, but this gives me my state of strain because again all of those uh, values given are strains. I need to find the shear strain so I can directly find the x and y setting up my axes like that and then I find the shear strain given the equation uh, from the book for, um, for rosettes. Okay, so once we have those, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the transformation to figure out what the maximum or the principal strains are. So again, my equation for principal strains given uh, right here, a plug and chug sort of situation. Okay, again, dropping the 10 to the minus 6 just to make life easier on me. Plus or minus, again, plus is uh, the principal strain 1, principal strain true would be the minus. That would be 300 minus negative 450 divided by 2 squared. Okay. Uh, calculating that answer, my maximum strain is 338.8. Times 10 to the minus 6. Again, dimensionless because it's strain. It's like meters per meter or whatever. And then my principal strain 2 is negative 488. And again, now these are my maximum and minimum strains. Okay. And I get that from that strain rosette first by finding the state of strain, finding that shear strain along with these strain in the x and y direction, and then doing the principal strain transformation to figure out what those maximum principal strains actually are. So again, I measure 300 and negative 450. Those actually are a little bit larger absolute value-wise, 338 and negative 488. Okay. Uh, then I do the same thing for the shear strain, just plug and chug into my equation once I have my state of strain. So that'll be 300 minus negative 450 divided by 2 squared plus negative 350 over 2. And then I find that my maximum shear strain is 8. 27.6. And of course, I can find the orientation if I wanted to. Don't really need it right now. But again, the whole idea behind this is using strain rosettes to determine the state of strain. That would be the strain in the x, y, and then the shear strain. And then using the transformation to find what those principles are, or the maximum. Again, the whole idea is just no matter how I put my strain rosette down, that doesn't necessarily mean that's where the mat what orientation the maximum strains are going to be in. So I need to figure out what that orientation is, what those maximum strains are, so that I can design accordingly.